In this video, I will show you how to set up Sparrow Bitcoin wallet. First, I'll be creating a standard single signature wallet. Next, I will show you how to send and receive Bitcoin. And I will let you know some of the best practices as we go along. Before we get started, you will need to download Sparrow wallet. I have a video on how to download and verify the authenticity of the software. I will make that video pop up somewhere at the top of my screen. So let's go to the computer and get started setting up Sparrow Wallet. All right, so here I am on my computer and the first thing I need to do is actually run Sparrow Wallet. So I'm gonna click on Sparrow and there we go, Sparrow Wallet is open. Now, before we get started, you will need to connect to a server. So to do this, click Sparrow at the top left of your screen, then click Preferences, then click Server. If you are watching this video, I assume that you are new to Sparrow Wallet or new to Bitcoin. So in the meantime, you can just connect to a public server. This is completely free and it just means that you're connecting to somebody else's Bitcoin node. Now there is a downside to this. Using a public server means that it can see your transactions. So if you have a lot of Bitcoin or you are privacy conscious, it isn't recommended that you connect to a public server. In my case, I will be connecting to my Bitcoin Core node. And there we go, we can see I've successfully connected. If you would like to run a Bitcoin node and connect Sparrow to your Bitcoin node, I firstly have a video on how to set up a Bitcoin node. And secondly, I have a video on how to connect Sparrow Wallet to your Bitcoin node. So again, if you are new to this, a public server will do, but you should aspire to eventually have your own node up and running. So I'm connected to a server now, so I'm gonna go ahead and close the screen. Now we can actually begin creating a Sparrow Wallet. To do this, just click file at the top left of your screen, then click new wallet. And now you will need to enter a name for this wallet. So I've made the name for my wallet, Sparrow Setup. And since I'm creating a new wallet, I'm not going to say that it has existing transactions. So I'm gonna leave this blank and click create wallet. Now there are two settings you can change at the top of your screen. Firstly, the policy type. So in our case, we're going to be creating a single signature wallet. And next we need to select our script type. So there's four options here. So again, assuming that you're new to Sparrow Wallet or new to Bitcoin, I would recommend that you select native SegWit. So I've selected native SegWit and now we need to click new or imported software wallet and this screen will pop up. What we want to do is create a new mnemonic phrase. So I'm going to change this to 12 words just so it's easier to write down and I'm gonna click generate new. And there we go, now my 12 words are on the screen. It's generally accepted that the best practice here is to write down your words on a piece of paper, or if you will be storing a lot of Bitcoin in this wallet, consider engraving your recovery phrase in some sort of metal. So firstly, you wanna keep these words somewhere safe because if you lose your computer or it breaks, you will need these words to recover your funds. Secondly, you wanna keep these words somewhere private because if somebody else has access to your words, they can access your Bitcoin. You also have the option to add a passphrase, which will essentially act as a 13th word. If you set a passphrase, that word will be just as important as your first 12 words. And without that 13th word, you will not be able to access your Bitcoin. So I don't want a passphrase, so I'm gonna leave this blank. All right, so I've written my 12 words down. I've got that backed up somewhere safe and somewhere private. So I'm gonna click confirm backup. Now Sparrow is gonna ask you, have you written these 12 words down? In the next step, you will need to re-enter them. So I have written this down so I can click re-enter words. And now you'll just need to re-enter your 12 words to ensure that you have written them down correctly. Okay, so I've re-entered all 12 of my words and it says valid checksum over here. And now I'm going to click create key store. And now Sparrow Wallet is gonna display this, which will be your derivation path. Again, if you are new to this, you probably won't know what this means. So you can just leave this as is. Don't delete anything, just leave it as is and click import key store. And there we go, all my settings are done and the wallet is ready to create. So as we can see, this is a single signature wallet. I'll be using the native SegWit script type. It is a software wallet. And if I want to view the seed again, I can over here. Here we have a label, which is BIP39. You can just leave that as BIP39. Here we have the master fingerprint, which will just be some text that is unique to your wallet. Here your derivation path will display again. And here is our XPUB and ZPUB. So if I click this on the right, it will switch to my ZPUB. And if I click it again, it will go back to my XPUB. What this is, is an extended public key. And this is very privacy sensitive. This key will derive all your addresses. 
So if somebody has this key, they can see all your addresses and all your transactions. There we go. So all our settings are set and go ahead and click apply. And our Sparrow wallet will ask if we want to set a password. So I'm going to quickly set a simple password just for the sake of this video. So I've set one, two, three, four as my password. And again, this is just for the sake of this video, you should set a stronger password. So I've typed that in now let me hit set password. And there we go, our wallet is ready to go. So now that I've created my wallet, we can see this blue bar on the left of my screen. At the top left, it says transactions. This is where all my transactions will display. So whenever I send or receive Bitcoin, it will show here. Here is the send tab. So if I want to send funds, I will do that here. Here is the receive tab. So if I want to get a new fresh Bitcoin address and set a label, I can do that here. If I click addresses, here is a list of all my receive addresses and my change addresses. Next, we'll see UTXOs. So this will be all my unspent outputs. So now that our wallet is all set up, let's go ahead and receive some funds in my Sparrow wallet. To do this, I'm gonna click receive. And the first thing I'm gonna do is set a label. I always recommend that you set a label so that in the future, you understand where this Bitcoin came from. So I'm gonna say Sparrow setup video. There we go, I've set the label. Now I'm going to copy this address and send some funds over to this address. All right, so I've just sent Bitcoin to that address. So if I go over to my transactions, here we can see I have one transaction and my balance is now 0 0.00074571 Bitcoin. Now underneath balance, you will see mempool with the same amount. And the reason it says mempool is because this transaction is yet to confirm on the blockchain. It's still waiting in the mempool to be mined by a Bitcoin miner. Now, if we head over to my UTXOs, we can see I will have one unconfirmed but spendable UTXO. So I received Bitcoin into this address and now it's sitting in my wallet as an unspent output. One thing to note is that if I go back to receive, we will notice that I get a new fresh Bitcoin address. Bitcoin addresses weren't designed to be reused. So for every transaction you do, you should get a new fresh Bitcoin address and set a different label for each of the addresses. So for example, let's say I sell something for Bitcoin. Say we sell a camera. I'm going to say camera sale. And there we go. That label is now associated with this address. And now if I want to, I can click at the bottom right of my screen, get new address and set a new label for this address. Let's say I sell a microphone. So I can say here microphone sale. Now, if we head over to our addresses, we can see if I scroll up, we've got the Sparrow setup video address, we've got the camera sale address, and we've got the microphone sale address. So again, it is best practice to use a new address for each transaction and to always label your addresses so that you know where the Bitcoin came from. This may not seem beneficial now, but in the future, trust me, it comes in handy. Okay, so now we have received Bitcoin, we can go ahead and send Bitcoin. So there are two ways to send Bitcoin in Sparrow Wallet. We can either click send over here, fill in the address, the label and the amount, or we can first click on UTXOs and then select which UTXO we want to spend. So I've selected my own UTXO and I'm going to click send selected at the bottom right of my screen. And then it's going to open the send tab. And now what I've done is I've told Sparrow which UTXO I wish to spend. Next, I need to fill in the address I want to send the funds to. So I already have this address copied. So I'm going to just paste that here. And now I need to create a label. So I've made my label Sparrow setup video. And here you can select the amount. So since I've selected a UTXO, I'll be doing the max of that one UTXO selected. So I'll be sending the maximum amount. And now we need to select a fee. Sparrow should automatically set a fee for you. But let me show you how to find the best fee. What I like to do is open any browser. So I'll be opening Firefox. Then you can open this site mempool.space. Here we can see the suggested fees for low priority, medium priority and high priority. What I like to do is look at this value over here. So if I want to be in the next block, which will be in around nine minutes, I need to pay 26 sats per byte. If I don't mind waiting a bit longer, then I would set five or six sats per byte to make sure I'm in the maybe next two or three blocks. If a whole bunch of people start transacting on the network and they start paying a higher fee than you, you can wait longer than expected. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to close this here and head back to Sparrow Wallet. 
and now I can select my fee. This transaction is not urgent. I do not mind waiting at all. So I'm just gonna make it one sat per byte. As you can see, this is below minimum, but I don't mind waiting days or even months for this to clear. I am in no rush at all. Here we can see the fee. So this is how much Bitcoin I will actually pay. And now what we need to do is actually create this transaction. So I've told Sparrow what I want to do. Now I'm gonna click create transaction. Now at the top of the screen, Sparrow Wallet will show you your transaction ID. And once again, it will show you how this transaction will appear on chain. So we have one input and two outputs. So I'm gonna close this. At the bottom here, it says signatures. So you will leave these both on the default. So basically I'm saying I'll be signing with my Sparrow setup wallet, which is the correct wallet. And it is recommended that you leave this on all. So I'm just gonna leave that on all. And now I click finalize transaction for signing. I then click sign. It's gonna ask me for my password. So I fill that in, click enter. And there we go, my transaction has been signed. So if I click view final transaction, here we can see the actual text that is going to broadcast my transaction to the network. And this text is signed by my private key. So the network will know that this is a valid spend. Now what I need to do is click broadcast transaction and there we go, that is how to send Bitcoin from your Sparrow wallet. If you found this valuable, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone.